I am the lead analyst for mobile for PCMag.com. Uh, we are, of course, a, a huge technology news and reviews site. Uh, we review more mobile phones and tablets than anyone else in the country. We actually review every phone that is released on the top seven carriers in the US and uh, pretty much every tablet that hits shelves. So everything in the US mobile industry goes past my team's desk at some point. And that gives us a pretty good perspective on what's happening now. And through talking to vendors, through seeing product trends, through going to events, what's happening in the future. And I'm going to share a little bit of that with you uh, right now. So a little bit of uh, scene setting here. We are turning into a smartphone nation. Now, we've got that stat up there that 48% of cell phone owners now own smartphones. Well, if you look at current sales, it's much more compelling. Uh, I just saw a stat that 81% of uh, mobile phones being sold right now are smartphones. Now, if you re remember that we're at essentially 100% uh, mobile phone penetration here in the US, which means that nearly every living human over the age of 15 has some sort of mobile phone. That means that within a year or two, nearly every living human over the age of 15, once their contracts turn over, is going to have a smartphone. Non-smartphones are going to be niche which means that everyone is going to have a portal to the web in their pocket. Everyone is going to have a computing device in their pocket. And what that means for marketing and what that means for your brands is this mobile omnipresence. Uh, smartphones and tablets are going way past PCs when it comes to penetration and when it comes to sales. Um, they're portable, they're personal, they're less expensive, they're more effective when it comes to uh, delivering information to you wherever you are and the information that you want. Uh, PCs are obviously a uh, PCs are obviously a very focused experience. You see when people are browsing on mobile, they're doing it in little bits. They're doing it relevant to where they are at the time and what comes into their minds. They're not sitting in front of their mobile browser for an hour at a time like they might be with a PC, but that mobile device is always with them and that makes a huge difference. So now, something else you have to remember about mobile phones, we call them cell phones. Here at PC Mag, we call them cell phones. We say we review 200 cell phones a year, but you know what? People are using them less and less as phones. They are really portals to the internet. And if you look at the trends in traffic, well, voice minutes have been relatively flat for a while. There's only a certain amount that people want to talk. Data is skyrocketing. Uh, people are using the internet more and more on these devices as they turn to smartphones. And as we look in trends among younger versus older users, well, this is common sense. It's something you know from your friends and relations. It's something you've seen around you. The younger users are talking less and using the internet more. You see this, uh, you see this also in plans targeted at these younger users, carriers like uh, Virgin Mobile, Metro PCS, T-Mobile, all of which skew younger and which are uh, now giving these low-cost plans that have relatively few voice minutes a lot of data. Now, I'm talking about, uh, I mentioned Virgin Mobile, Metro PCS, T-Mobile uh, for a point, which is that prepaid or no contract, which is what they call it now, but I've been doing this for way too long, so I still call it prepaid. That's the segment of the uh, mobile phone market that is growing the fastest. And you're seeing maybe some of this is, wow, opa. Um, maybe some of this is uh, smartphones going to youth. Maybe some of this is uh, the tough economy which we've had over the past couple of years. Uh, maybe some of this is uh, the no contract providers uh, just offering more compelling data packages. But no contract is growing dramatically and dramatically faster than the contract providers are. Let's see. Come on. There we go. Okay, so let's talk about some trends over the next five years. We're going to see more and more people using mobile as their primary method of web browsing. We've already begun to see this with some of these no-contract carriers. Uh, if you go and you talk to Metro PCS or Cricket, um, you talk to carriers where 60, uh, 50, 60, 70 percent of the people on those carriers are using mobile as their primary method of internet access. They may not have home internet access or they may be younger people in a home with, let's say, an, ina an inadequate number of computers 
where their phone is now their primary internet access. We're only going to see this trend grow, especially as we're seeing a boom in phablets. I'll talk about the phablets a little more a little later, but uh, phablets are these phone-tablet hybrids. They're connected. They're a little too big to hold up to your head, but you know what? They're perfect for a lot of internet access, and that's why they're booming. Um, second trend here, uh, second trend here over the next five years, um, you're going to be seeing uh, faster 4G networks. You know, someday there will be a 5G network. The Gs never stop. Uh, but there will be these data caps, okay? There will be, uh, you're not going to see a lot of unlimited plans. This is something you should take into account with your brands if you're considering uh, offering up streaming media or things that take up a lot of data. People are still going to have to be managing their plans because even as more airwaves come online, more people are going to want to use those airwaves. That also means the carriers are really focused right now on Wi-Fi offloading, on uh, finding, accessing, and even in some cases constructing Wi-Fi hotspots, and in something called small cells, which is a way of breaking up uh, larger cell sites into uh, as I said, smaller cells that can then uh, carry more data per square mile, basically. Um, third trend, well, we've already seen this. This is a trend I left in from six months ago, which is that uh, the tablet world is not an iPad world anymore. And uh, in the US, it was really Amazon that broke that lock. In the rest of the world, it was Samsung. But uh, if you are thinking of tablets as iPads, think again, that day is over. iPads are definitely still where a lot of the tablet action is, where a lot of the tablet commerce is being done. But you have to look at the Kindle Fire and Nexus 7 at the minimum. And uh, if you're looking global, uh, that spread just gets broader. Uh, fourth trend, the growth of M2M and connected devices. So a couple of years ago, I uh, was talking to a Verizon executive who was telling me about his dreams for the next 10 years. And uh, he kept on talking about uh, the slightly embarrassingly named 500% penetration. And what yeah, I know, you giggle. Um, what 500% penetration means, though, in the industry is very serious. It means that every individual in this country has to have five devices that connect to the internet through a mobile carrier somehow. They aren't all going to be phones. They're hardly ever going to be phones. They're going to be things that I saw at Verizon's booth at CES. There are trash cans that connect to the internet now. They tell the trash collector when to pick them up. There are football helmets that connect uh, to Verizon's network. Uh, they transmit uh, concussion data to the coaches. We're going to see this incredible flourishing of uh, strange, interesting devices that connect to these networks, that request data from these networks, that are opportunities for anyone involved with these networks. Finally, uh, mobile payments. I know that's something everybody in this world, uh, everybody in this room is very interested in. We're still not 100% sure what form they're going to come in, but yeah, they're going to come. It's going to happen over the next three to five years. The mobile payments problem is not actually a technology problem. It's a who wants what percentage piece of the pie problem. It'll get figured out. Get my next slide here. Okay. A couple of things to watch. Um, carrier consolidation. Uh, this year, we are going to see the end game of that for a while. Uh, President Obama was reelected. The Obama FCC said that they basically want four national carriers and that, uh, barring extreme circumstances, they will not settle for less than four national carriers. Uh, the industry has heard it. We will have four national carriers. Uh, that means that, as you can see, Clearwire is going into Sprint, Metro PCS is going into T-Mobile, and I'm pretty sure Cricket and U.S. Cellular will get absorbed by someone. Uh, maybe AT&T. AT&T is definitely shopping. In any case, we're going to have a relatively uh, we're going to have a relatively stable four carrier system, at least until the next president is elected, uh, with an FCC that might have a different opinion. So next couple of years, mobile platforms. Uh, this one is not actually defined by the government. Uh, there's basically room for three mobile operating systems in the market, and we know two of them are Apple and Android. Uh, they own 92 percent of the smartphone market right now. Who will be the third? Could be BlackBerry, could be Microsoft. 
uh, could be cross-platform HTML5, which is embodied on devices by things like Firefox and Ubuntu and other exotics like that. Uh, Microsoft is currently in the lead for being the third mobile platform, and I've got one of the new Blackberries uh, in my pocket right now. I can tell you that the new BlackBerry is good. I don't think it's quite good enough. Uh, BlackBerry has made a really good product that would be really compelling if 92% of the market wasn't held by Android and Apple. Um, they're not providing compelling reasons for people with those platforms to move over to their platform. Microsoft's advantage is synergy. Microsoft has Xbox. Microsoft has Office. Um, Microsoft has cloud services. Microsoft has Windows 8. And Microsoft can leverage that entire ecosystem if they do so competently, which they haven't done so far. But they could, in theory, competently leverage that ecosystem into a much stronger position than BlackBerry could have. Finally, just wanted to give another mobile payments uh, mention there. Can ISIS succeed? ISIS is currently the front runner in the mobile payments race. Uh, if only because three of the wireless carriers have bought into it. I have moderately high hopes for ISIS. Um, it's definitely the best uh, mobile payments horse to bet on right now. Um, but all the same, we haven't seen much activity from them in the past couple of months, which is a little disappointing. Okay. Sorry, the uh, wireless remote is not being that great. Okay. Finally, wanted to give some trends uh, that I saw at uh, CES this year and that I think we're going to see at Mobile World Congress, which is the world's biggest cell phone trade show. It happens at the end of February. Of course, we're going to be there. Of course, we're covering it comprehensively. Heck, we even have an app. Um, it's, it's the first app I ever wrote, so be gentle on it. But if you search for PC Mag MWC in the Android Google Play Store right now, you will see my app. Um, couple of things to think about this year. Five inches is the new four inches. Uh, people want to access the internet on their phones most of all. That is the thing they most want. Uh, then maybe they want to play some games. In any case, they want these bigger and bigger screens. Hand size be damned. So we're going to see a lot of screens around the five inch size. Uh, that's going to be especially normalized by the Samsung Galaxy S4, which is going to be a gigantic hit when it comes out in April and is going to have a 4.99 inch screen. Next, 1080p is the new 720p. Uh, this has something to do for all you guys with how you encode your assets. Uh, we saw the first 1080p palm-sized phone come uh, late last year in the HTC Droid DNA. Those 1080p screens uh, from Sharp, from LG, from Samsung, they're going to be all over the place by the middle of this year. And so we're going to see a demand for ever higher resolution graphics, ever higher resolution assets, uh, these sort of super retina displays at 5 inches, 443 pixels per inch. Third trend. Um, imaging, inno imaging innovation and computational photography. We've basically seen the end of the megapixel race, okay? We can now put as many megapixels in a cell phone as anyone would ever want. And more importantly, uh, enough megapixels to create files larger than anyone would ever want to transfer. So the question now is, what are we going to do with those megapixels? Um, NVIDIA, with their Tegra 4 chipset, has shown uh, mobile chips devoted to computational photography, which means uh, very quickly analyzing, altering, uh, analyzing, altering, and changing photos dynamically, like we're seeing someone alter the exposure just by dragging their finger across the screen. Uh, we're going to see a lot, of interest a lot of interest in augmented reality and a lot of interest in uh, live video editing and uh, live video editing, live video themes, et cetera, et cetera. Things where you train your camera on things and the things change as you watch them. There's going to be a lot of that. Nokia, meanwhile, is driving their pure view technology, which uh, creates these kinds of super pixels Made up, of, uh, made up of little pixels, but takes a five or eight megapixel image and drives all the noise out of it. So the megapixels don't get greater, but the image quality gets much greater. So we're going to be seeing a lot of innovations around these imaging issues, but not necessarily in megapixels. 
Finally, global LTE with rich communication services. RCS is relatively little known, I've found, and it's a great opportunity for brands. As carriers go to LTE, and yes, everyone is going to LTE this year, and a lot of international carriers are going to LTE, and all the major US carriers are going LTE, um, the carriers are laying down uh, rich communications over their voice services. That means that voice calling will now have presence. It'll now have built-in instant messaging. Uh, it'll now have uh, multimedia messaging uh, at the same time as the voice call integrated in the voice call interface. Um, and you'll be able to do uh, voice calling, voice messaging, and multimedia messaging very easily integrated with your apps. This has to do with the uh, changeover of voice services from earlier 2G systems into being integrated with the uh, internet-based uh, 4G LTE system. And it's really the biggest user interface change in voice calling that we'll have seen, I guess, since cell phones. <laughs> <laughs>